As we know, the sea is rich in resources ranging from fisheries, tourism to the most valuable oil and natural gas. To access these valuable treasures, oil and gas industry players must drill the ocean floor kilometers away through offshore oil platforms. Typically, offshore oil platforms are very large and operated far out in the middle of the ocean. They can even be tens of hundreds of kilometers offshore. Each oil platform has an operational lifespan depending on the agreement of the company. The operating time for each rig varies, ranging from 5 years, 10 years, or even decades. So, what happens when the contract period for operating offshore oil rig ends? Like everything else, there comes a time when these oil rigs must be retired. The process of retiring an oil rig is commonly known as decommissioning. Decommissioning is a term used to describe the final stage of an energy project. In the oil and gas industry, when the production cycle of a field ends and usable fuel has been processed, the facility must be dismantled and the surrounding area restored to its original condition. This is regulated by the Petroleum Act 1998. The decommissioning process involves various methods such as well cleaning and plugging as well as infrastructure and platform removal. In some cases, certain sections of conductor pipes may be left in place to form artificial reefs for marine life. However, most parts of these oil rigs are completely cleaned to ensure that the marine ecosystem can be preserved as before. Various platform elements can be reused or recycled for other projects or disposed of as scrap after being brought back to shore. Not only dismantling and disposing of the oil drilling platform, but the seabed must also be cleaned of all debris to ensure it is returned to its original condition. Some of the workforce deployed in the decommissioning process includes civil engineers, maritime engineers, safety engineers, project managers, surveyors, and waste management consultants. Basically, there are a total of 10 stages in decommissioning an offshore oil platform. First is the initial preparation starting up to 3 years before the oil well dries up. This must be carefully reviewed to ensure that the cessation and leasing follow agreed procedures. Just like during the construction of drilling rigs, the decommissioning process also requires large funds and a large number of professional teams. Second, contractors must conduct technical analysis of the entire project to create a comprehensive decommissioning plan, especially on safety and environmental factors during the dismantling and relocation of each platform part. Third, the decommissioning process must obtain the appropriate permits for the project to run smoothly and comply with applicable laws. Environmental factors and the impact of planned work play a significant role in obtaining approved permits. Thus, operators must ensure they have a comprehensive plan and conduct up-to-date surveys of the project area. Once permitted, the fourth step is to start the decommissioning project by cleaning up the remaining hydrocarbons in all pipes, tanks, equipment, and other areas that may contain hazardous materials or drilling residues. In addition, pipes and cables are also cut between deck modules. Divers are also deployed to remove marine biota growth attached to the platform's bottom. Out of all decommissioning processes, the fifth step is the most costly, namely cleaning up the oil well holes. Not only is it the most expensive, but it is also the most difficult process as it must be done correctly and carefully to prevent environmental issues that would leave underwater wells open. 
After the wells are emptied of downhole equipment, cleaned and filled with fluid, the oil well is closed and considered abandoned because there will be no more production done in the future. Next, the sixth process is the conductor pipe release, which requires a long process and involves cutting the casing using various methods such as explosives, abrasives, ID cutters, or diamond wire saws. Operators must be able to determine the most effective and practical cutting method, depending on area conditions, structure types, and project needs. These segments are pulled using casing jacks, then lowered using rental cranes in the platform staging area. These parts are usually taken to boats and brought back to the harbor for transport to disposal sites on shore. The seventh step is the mobilization and demobilization of crane barges needed to lift and transport platforms. This is also a planning stage to determine how the top part of the platform is removed, either in one piece, in modular groups, or in smaller sections. Project managers must consider the crane capacity at the dismantling site to avoid undesirable incidents such as crane collapse due to overloaded cargo. Next is the eighth process, which is the complete dismantling of the entire oil rig. This process depends on the size of the oil rig. Smaller platforms are often moved at once to crane barges with sufficient lifting capacity. However, the most common method is to dismantle the top part in reverse order from its installation. Or, if necessary, the crew can cut into smaller pieces that can be detached with platform cranes or deck-mounted cranes. Once the top part of the platform is removed, the jacket elements and underwater bottom parts can also be removed. Similar to conductor release, the jacket must be cut into several pieces by divers using explosives, mechanical cutters, torches, or abrasives. If it is in water less than 60 meters deep, this jacket can be removed in one lift. The ninth process is the deactivation of pipeline and cable networks. Decisions on deactivating these two have been made beforehand by the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement or BOEMRE. If BOEMRE deems that the pipeline or electric cable network does not pose an environmental hazard, nor will it interfere with navigation or commercial fishing operations, both can be deactivated and left in place. However, if BOEMRE determines that these electric cables and pipes are hazardous, then all these elements must be removed along with other platform elements. The last or tenth step is the waste disposal and site cleaning process. Depending on their condition and type, dismantling platforms can be reused or refurbished for other projects. If not, the platform will be moved to other sea areas to form artificial reefs or disposed of in special waste disposal sites. But actually, the very last step of the offshore oil rig decommissioning process is cleaning up the site. The crew will conduct a survey to map the remaining debris from the removal process and note any environmental damage. This survey process is usually carried out by a team of divers or using remotely operated vehicles or ROVs that can be operated from a distance. After the survey and debris cleaning have been completed, a trawl test is conducted to verify that the area is safe. Decommissioning has become a promising and growing industry thanks to the increasing number of offshore oil wells entering retirement. In 2015 alone, decommissioning project expenditures reaches $2.4 billion. It is estimated that this figure will increase to $13 billion by 2040. This represents a 540% increase in just 25 years. 
Out of the many drilling rigs in the world, one oil platform that has entered the decommissioning status is the Brent Delta. The platform, operated by Shell in the North Sea with a weight of 24,000 tons, was dismantled in February 2019. Meanwhile, its sister, Brent Bravo, weighing 25,000 tons, was moved in June 2019. Currently, these platforms have been dismantled and recycled. The Brent Bravo and Delta platform legs remain in place with the GBS subsea storage cells. The contents of these GBS storage cells likely include hydrocarbon residues and radioactive toxic elements.